Brigade Falcha Arash and throw in is almost upon us for round two of this Monster Hurling Championship game between Limerick and Clare. Well, we're almost ready to go, lads. Just just have a word on those two late changes from Clare, Seamus. What did you make of them? Paul Flanagan gone and Ian Galvin. Yeah, it's really interesting Rory Hayes cornerback in terms of matchups for Clare. So like for Rory Hayes, especially with the pace that he brought to the defence when he came on last week against Tipperary, I think he's going to pick up Peter Casey when he drifts out around the 45. And for Ryan Taylor, you know, a big player for Clare, a young player that has been coming onto the scene the last couple of years, his pace is going to be troubling for Limerick. We saw last week against Watford, Jamie Byrne cut through the middle. We saw Watford cause Limerick hassle when they ran it up direct, and we already talked about Dave Fister. For me, those late changes are, are significant. You could see Ryan Taylor probably going around the middle of the field, middle thirds, trying to get an on break. Clare trying to swarm that area and, and maybe win that turnover battle there. So expect probably Kelly Taylor out there, early doors maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Rory Hayes as well. He's not a massive man, but early last year I thought he was really, really impressive. So again, he might be inside there to negate that area, long ball and top of the line possibly. Yeah. Okay, well let's see, and we'll head up now to our commentary team for the start of this game, Tommy Walsh. But first, Liam Ahern. Thank you very much, Grania. Good evening, everybody. The TUS Gaelic Rounds is uh, filling up nicely as we look forward to this evening's game. One change from the Limerick side that uh, won last day out. Disease Garrod Hegarty dropped to the bench. Cahill O'Neill comes in in his place. There was a fitness doubt about Declan Hannan, but John Coyley, Limerick manager, has said that fitness uh, doubt has now passed, and Declan Hannan does start at centre back. Dara Donovan and Will O'Donoghue continue at midfield. While it'll be interesting to see if the forward line will fire that little bit more than they did last weekend. Aaron Galland scored seven points, five from freeze in the win against Waterford. From a clear point of view, well, the much publicised change in goals sees Aver Quilligan come in in goals ahead of tonight with Eamon Foody dropping to the bench. Couple of late changes, as we mentioned. Ryan Taylor replaces Paul Flanagan on the starting 15, while up front, Rory Hayes comes in to replace Ian Galvin. There's a return as well for David Fitzgerald, who missed last day out due to suspension. He's back in the middle of the field alongside Cahill Malone. Tony Kelly only scored one point last weekend in that defeat at the hands of Tipperary. They'll be hoping for more from him. Aidan McCarthy was the top scorer last weekend. Well, we're looking forward to what is going to be an absolute cracker. Aaron Galan, well, as I mentioned, seven points the last day, five of them from freeze. He'll be looking for an up on that over the course of the evening. Tommy Walsh alongside me in commentary. Tommy, you've been looking forward to this since you got here nice and early. The crowd has certainly arrived, and we're looking forward to what should be a belter. Yeah, Liam, here since about half three. The place is humming outside. Huge following from Flair, huge following from Limerick. Um, I suppose Limerick were under pressure after their performance last weekend. They really want to come perform for the home crowd. Clare are under a different kind of pressure. They're under pressure to stay in the championship. So this is all the signs to be a, a huge contest because when it comes down to it, when there's two rival cities, two rival towns playing against each other, it's usually a great atmosphere. Well, there's very little to separate the border between Limerick and Clare. You could hit a slitter out of the Gaelic Crowns and it could land in Clare before we get on the way with the playing of the national anthem or on the beat. The Monster Championship roar. There's very little to beat it. Column Lines of Cork is our match referee for this evening. And we are pretty much set for this game. They produced two crackers last year in the championship. If it's half as good tonight, we're in for a cracker. Limerick straight away winning possession of it with Dara Donovan. 
launching this ball long in towards Aaron Galan, who's up, off towards Flanagan, shot, brilliant save from Aver Quilligan. He's tested inside the opening 12 seconds, and the clear defence stands strong. Launch forward down the centre of the field, brilliantly won by Declan Hannan. Off as far as Dara Donovan, Donovan in possession of it. What a start to the game, 12 seconds in, as Donovan launches it forward. Flanagan out in front of his man again, turns and strikes this. It's going to drop in, Quilligan watches it and gathers it again. Aaron Galan puts Quilligan under all sorts of pressure, but he does well to come away with possession of it. And now it's Clare who come away with it and a chance for them to perhaps build an attack themselves. Adam Hogan tight towards this near sideline. Peter Casey up against it. Hogan lays it off as far as Tony Kelly Tony Kelly oh what a score what a start Tommy Walsh what a start Liam we all started Eber Quilligan what a start for that young man back into the starting team today two brilliant a catch and a brilliant save and Tony Kelly always plays well against Limerick well what an opening minute and 10 seconds well if it's going to match this for the rest of the night buckle yourselves in folks because this is Munster Championship as David Fitzgerald sets off on a run for Clare launches this one into the clear in terrace and he has struck it between the uprights and Clare they were under pressure from the start but my god they have done exceptionally well two points to nil yeah and Tony Kelly has gone inside on Finn Peter Duggan has gone in on the edge of the square Shane O'Donnell is out here in the wing on Dermot Burns huge changes all around the field Liam there was the goal chance but from the puck out, Keen Lynch doesn't win possession of it. Clare, is it too early to say they're battling for their championship lives? Well, they're certainly playing like a team like that inside the opening two minutes. Good old tussle going on beneath us. Dermot Burns is in there, and Adam Hogan absolutely delighted to win that. You've mentioned there's lots of switches, Tommy. Lots of switches, and listen, Limerick shocked Clare in 1955 months were final lean. Clare were the half favourites. Limerick won and Mick Mackey was over him. Will we see a shock here today? Will we see Clare back in the Munster Championship? I didn't think you were around in 1955, Tommy, but here we go. <laughs> Here's I was an listening to it on the radio. Aidan <laughs> McCarthy to take this free for Clare. He's inside his own half. He scored a goal and 13 points last day out inside his own 65 meter line as McCarthy picks this and strikes it into the evening sky it's going to go to the right will it be kept in play the answer to that is no it is the first ride of the night it comes two minutes and 41 seconds into the opening half as Limerick with their puck out from Nicky Quaid goes along down that far side of the field towards Keane Lynch doesn't win it the first time but the magician gathers it at the second attempt 45 out from goal he's been held back by John Conlon and the referee is awarded a free free going in favour of Limerick and I don't think John Conlon can have too many complaints about this one Tommy no and it all came from the long puck out as they said Liam so Nicky had to go along for that so interestingly Brian Lone has instructed his charges they're picking them all up man on man so Sean Finn is not left free as he was last week Byron Nash is definitely not left free so it'll be interesting to see how that carries on through the game Aaron Galan then with this free for Limerick an opportunity to get their first score of the game they had the couple of early chances goal chances but Aaron Galan looks to open the scoring in front of a pretty much packed house on that far side they were saying around 33,000 people they're expecting at the TUS Gaelic grounds Aaron Galan the minute he left his stick he just shook his head he has hit that one left and wide first of the night for Limerick second wide in total uncharacteristic from Aaron Galan Tommy yeah he doesn't miss too many of them he's really the go to a man himself and Flanagan they're, they're a great duo at the moment Puck out, goes long down the centre of the field. Declan Hannan breaks it down in there to try and win possession of it. Back in the half-back line was Barry Nash. Didn't win it cleanly, nobody does, but Nash eventually gets the ball into his hand. Off now as far as Cahill O'Neill, starting tonight after coming on as a sub the last day towards Kyle Hayes. The Kildimo Palace Henry man, well able to score from deep. Off towards Dara Donovan. Donovan from that far sideline strikes it across this near side into the space. Peter Casey almost got a touch, enough to Seamus Flanagan. That's going to drop short though, and Aver Quilligan is alert to that one and pops this one out the far side. And Clare looking to build again from deep inside their own half. Here's an opportunity. That is Tony Kelly striking it in and striking it beautifully. Three points to nil. They might have had a slow start in terms of Limerick getting the better goal chances, but Clare taking their chances when they come. Yeah, the wizard from Clare. You can't leave him free, but. In fairness to Limerick, they tend to go with the team structure. They, they go zone defence. They don't man-mark Tony. 
Cahill O'Neill, one possession of it, up against him, David McInerney. McInerney and Cahill O'Neill in a right old tussle down beneath us. Ball eventually spills loose and brought away by John Conlon, who picks it up. The referee, though, is going to call a player over. There was uh, an incident there. John Conlon isn't a bit happy with that. But referee Cullen Lyons is talking to Willow Dunahoo, and it's a yellow card for Willow Dunahoo. Didn't see what happened myself now, Tommy. But yeah, we'll probably see it on the replay, but Willow Dunn, who's one of those players, Liam, that every team loves to have one of them on their team because he's always defending, always getting them forwards away. He's a great man to have midfield and win back. Here it is. Here he comes in, kind of just a little bit kind of wild with the with the hurry. But listen, the ball was there, he was going for it, but Colin is going to call these today. Aidan McCarthy then, with this effort, from well inside his own half, he's between his own 45 and 65 metre line, He's about 15 in from the sideline, striking it. No real breeze of any significance here at the TUS Gaelic Grounds. As this one is struck, it's going to drop to the right for the second time in a row and go wide for Clare's second, both of them from the stick of Aidan McCarthy freeze. Yes, and he had a horror injury last year, I think, in work or that. He missed the whole year, so the Clare people, we often hear Anthony Daly speaking very highly about him. They're excited to see him back. Nicky Quaid with the puck out from the edge of the square, launches this one long, brilliantly taken in the air over there, dear Ryan it was, but Limerick have intercepted it, that is Tom Morrissey striking this one from 45 yards out, and Tom Morrissey gets Limerick's first point of the evening, it comes six and a half minutes into the opening half, the Limerick are off the mark, Tommy. Yeah, and I find Tom Morrissey, the bigger the game, the better he plays, uh, here he is off his, his favourite left-hand side, um, just never, ne never does not deliver like on the big day he's always there well the umpire has called referee Cullen lines in to have a chat with him not quite sure what the conversation is going to be Aaron Gillan was pleading a case inside there as well the umpires have spotted something and Aaron Gillan is the man that's being called over Connor Cleary is inside there as well to keep an eye on things but no cards nothing of any significance and referee Cullen Lyons decides let's just get back this game of hurling underway again and that's exactly what Ava Quilligan does Will O'Donoghue brings it down two clear men around him leaves space for Dermot Burns across the centre of the field Burns' pass is loose but Kyle Hayes does well to get there ahead of David Fitzgerald Hayes ends up on the ground, referee says play away and Hayes eventually has the ball in his hand he's on his hands and knees, he wasn't being left up says the referee, it's going to be a free no quarter Asner given we were expecting it Tommy No, and, and Callum Lyons is a tough referee, he sets out his stall early, we saw it early he did it with the yellow card early to William O'Donoghue, he went into the umpires had a little talk, you know, use his common sense he's sending out the message to the players to know he's not a guy you mess with and on we go on, it's a great championship game so far. It sure is, Dermot Burns is coming up to take this free on the 65. Fine crowd here this evening, a lot of rain has fallen just in the past hour and a bit, but uh, they're not too bothered about it in the open stand. They're being entertained by this cracking opening nine minutes so far as Dermot Burns lines up this free, striking it into the goal to our right-hand side. That's the City Inn Terrace that you see there. Three points last day out for Burns, all of them from Freeze. This is an opportunity to cut the gap back to one. The umpire nods at the other. The white flag is waved. There is no white flag of surrender. Limerick at their second point of the night, and we're back to a one-point game. Aver Quilligan to take this puck out, sends it down the centre. Cahill Malone wins possession of this one there. Pretty much, I won't say uncontested, but Tony Kelly has it now. Kelly under all sorts of pressure, he's lost the hurley. William O'Donoghue who is in there to put in the challenge, and the referee has said he pulled the arm of Tony Kelly. It's going to be a free, free going in favour of Clare. Here we see it again. There's Tony Kelly, the hurley goes in. That's not the issue, I think this is the one there. You'd have got pulled a lot of times for that, Tommy. <laughs> There wasn't as many cameras when I was hurling. Aidan <laughs> <laughs> McCarthy with this free then. Just on halfway. Looks to the target. Zero from two so far for the Ina Kilimona man. He'll be hoping to get off the mark, which this looks to be a better strike. It is, and it is between the uprights. 
It's a point for Aidan McCarthy, it's from a free, but it's a point nonetheless. And Clare go back, two to the good again. As Nicky Quaid's puck out, sent down that far side, Cahill O'Neill breaks it down to himself. Was he foul? The referee says no, the crowd on that far side are incensed, but Kyle Hayes pops it towards Declan Hannon. Hannon brilliantly blocked down by Dermot Ryan, but gathers it back again. Now to Cahill O'Neill, tight to the sideline, off to Kyle Hayes. Hayes trying to find his way through, referee playing the advantage. Is there one fourth coming? There's not, I don't think, says the referee. Difficult to even hear yourself think in the TUS Gaelic rounds this evening. Free going in favour of Limerick. Yeah, and Kyle Hayes is a nightmare to mark. You see him here bursting through as a wing back. He's always going forward, always looking for the opportunity to score. But there's two clear men around him. Kyle Hayes is 6 foot 5 you can't stop him. And that's the advantage Limerick have over every other team. I heard Owen talking about the Limerick game plan, that every other team is trying to, to copy them. It's very difficult to do because not everyone is the same size as Dermot Burns and Kyle Hayes and Will Dunhill. Here comes the free then down the far side. It's Aaron Galan to take this free. It's only a couple in from the sideline. About 60 metres out. The angle will make it a little bit more difficult, so... Here it comes from Aaron Galan, picks this one and strikes it. He liked that one, and why wouldn't he? It has sailed between the uprights. He hit one wide earlier, but that is his first point of the evening from a difficult enough old angle. It was, especially after missing the first one. This one was farther out, but himself and Flanagan are on form all year. Puck out. Again, goes down the centre of the field. Keen Lynch almost intercepted, but Aidan McCarthy wins it, launches it long. Anybody at home from a clear point of view knows the answer, and it goes to the right-hand side and wide. That's Clare's third wide of the evening. That one off the stick of Aidan McCarthy, and he struck all three wide so far in the opening 12 or so minutes. Puck out down this near side, broken now. Cahill Malone wins it. The fabric of the shorts being tested as he gives the pass towards Ryan Taylor. Taylor across the centre, here's an opportunity. Hand pass out in this near side, finds Mark Rogers under pressure, gets it in and puts it over the crossbar. Point goes for Clare and it comes from Mark Rogers. Could have been a little bit more though, Tommy. Yeah, and that's a natural forward's instinct. You go for the goal, but good lads down when it's not on. What's Shane O'Donnell? Is the goal here? No, tips it over the bar because it wasn't done. He had a great Fitzgibbon Cup campaign and he's really playing well. Well, Clare are doing well in Limerick's puck out because here's an opportunity for Aidan McCarthy, which he sends in and sends over the crossbar. Second point for Aidan McCarthy in this game. That one came about as a result of a turnover from the Limerick puck out. Yeah, and that will give them every bit as... They'll be every bit as satisfied with that as, as a score themselves because the turnover this Limerick team is very difficult. Back with play. Limerick goes short again with the puck out and Darrett Donovan under pressure this time finds Barry Nash and Nash from inside his own 45 sends the ball down this near side Tom Morrissey not alert to it the first time Peter Casey was he tripped? The referee has said yes he was it's going to be a free free going in favour of Limerick and an opportunity for them from this near side here we'll see the foul again Peter Casey just clipped on the knees there by Dermot Ryan. Yeah, just a bit lazy with the, the swing, you know, there's no need to do it out in the wing. Peter Casey, such an important player for this Limerick team. If you notice, he's the corner forward that comes out around the middle lane, and what it gives is fierce space into Galana and Flanagan, that if the space is in there, they can give the ball in quick, because you have to follow Casey. Deary done his crucial with five points scored in the All-Ireland final. Many people said probably in line for man of the match on that day when he did it, but here comes Aaron Galan, one point so far in this evening's game. Back from a free on the far side, picks it and strikes it. It looks to be good. The umpire has said it is. We were right behind it. Second point of the night for Aaron Galan. And all of a sudden, we're back to a two-point game. Six to Clare, four to Limerick. And as Clare goes short with the puck out, and Connor Cleary, oceans of space inside his own semicircle, launches it down to the opposite one. Sean Finn just about got to it. David Fitzgerald was lurking. Finn off as far as Dermot Burns and Burns hits it off Tom Morrissey but it still worked out from a Limerick point of view as Dara Donovan now finds Keen Lynch off towards Declan Hannan long ball sent in from Hannan trying to find Flanagan who's out in front of his man Flanagan turns and strikes this one in beautiful from Seamus Flanagan he was out in front of Rory Hayes and when Flanagan gets out like that there's normally only one answer yes and he missed the first couple of chances but he's winning every single ball he's out in front his movement is epic 
over onto the left hand and over the bar. He scored eight points in last year's Munster final. Like, he is on fire the last two years. One between them again. As Clare ready to take the puck out again with Aver Quilligan. Launches this one long down the centre. Kyle Hayes was watching that taken away from him by Shane O'Donnell. Forward towards Peter Duggan, who can't get it. Pulled on first time by Aidan McCarthy. And it breaks out on that far side, and Dara Donovan is first to respond to it. His midfield partner, Will O'Donnell, who was there as well, but it's gone to Tom Morrissey. Back again towards Donovan. Back now to Tom Morrissey on the 13-yard line. That's a poor pass from Morrissey, but it just didn't go to hand to the clear man. And, uh, well, Aidan McCarthy will be disappointed that he couldn't capitalise on that. And Nicky Quaid has it now on the 13-yard line. Since a long ball, there's absolutely no green shot. Seamus Flanagan trying to close down the clear man. As he comes away with that one, that's Tony Kelly back inside his own half. This would almost feel like a win for Limerick if they were to turn this one over as Ryan Taylor's pass just about goes to hand and they have turned it over. Tom Morrissey, Flanagan screaming for it. Keen Lynch with a deft little flick. Back to Flanagan. Here's Tom Morrissey. Brilliant block by John Conlon back there. Tom Morrissey's helmet has gone off him. Referee says play away and Clare's defence stands resolute on this occasion as David McInerney comes away, finds the support from David Fitzgerald. Now to Adam Hogan, down that far side. Clare have an ocean of space to attack, but Cahill Malone is going to have an effort from a long, long way out. Should have taken it. Very easy for me to say up here, but he should have taken that a few more steps, Tommy. He should. He struck from 100 yards. This clear team is playing the very same as their man manager, Brian Lohan. Fire, brimstone, heart, courage. They lost the ball, went back and won it. Puck out from Nicky Quaid. Ops to go long this time on this near side underneath it as Keane Lynch breaks it down. Will he win possession of it before it rolls out over the sideline? He went out over the sideline. He kept the ball in play, but it worked out for Clare. John Conlon found Aidan McCarthy, and McCarthy's long-range effort comes in here, and Aidan McCarthy has put it between the uprights. Third point of the night for Aidan McCarthy, and Clare lead by two. We can all see what the Clare people are talking about now. I know he had a couple of wides early, but he's shooting every time, he's afraid of nothing. Well, there is a lot of talk about him across the border here in Clare. They absolutely love Aidan McCarthy, missed last season, but my God, he's making up for it now. As Clare again, come on the attack down that far side. Here's David McInerney striking that one in. David McInerney has put it between the uprights. It's a point for the wing-back. Brian Lone must be absolutely delighted with his side. Three points to the good. They didn't. David McInerney wouldn't be normally known for his shooting, but they have to be adaptable in today's game. Nicky Quaid's puck out goes long again. Down this near side. Oh, brilliantly won by William O'Donoghue. Finds Tom Morrissey. Morrissey's effort is going to drop short inside. Aaron Gallant beaten to it on that occasion, but Keen Lynch is going to win it. Lynch has it. What's he going to do with it? Finds the support from William O'Donoghue. Back again towards Keen Lynch. Strikes this one into the City in Terrace. And it has gone between the uprights, and Keen Lynch gets his first point of Championship 2023. Puck out, meanwhile, has already been taken, and David Fitzgerald's effort is going to go all the way in and over the crossbar. David Fitzgerald, one possession of it. Aver Quilligan found David Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald gets his point on the night. And we're back to a three-point game. Barely even time to stop here as Tom Morrissey wins the puck out. This time it's blocked by Tony Kelly back there. Kelly on his own defensive 45-meter line. Cullum Lines did well to keep out of the way of the flight of the Schlitter. William O'Donoghue finds Declan Hannan right on halfway. Now towards Barry Nash. Away comes Barry Nash as he launches this in. Aaron Galan out in front of Connor Cleary. Galan on his hands and knees fell over as he struck it, but it goes to the right and wide. Second wide of the game for Limerick. Yeah, and physically, Connor Cleary is a great matchup for Galan. Usually, any ball coming in like that, he has it whipped over the bar. But Cleary's in, he's tough, he's strong, he's tight. It's a great battle. It's a fascinating battle all over the field. And at the moment, it is Clare who are winning the vast bulk of them. 20 minutes gone. Shane O'Donnell didn't get to it. Barry Nash bats it down. Tom Morrissey looked to be fouled. He was, as the referee. Dermot Ryan just a little too anxious to get to the ball and went through the back of Tom Morrissey. Free going in favour of Limerick. And an opportunity for them 
expect to take this from their own 65 metre line. Dermot Burns is going to strike it for the first time in the game. There's almost a bit of a lull. Yeah, and Burns, like, he strikes these over as if they were 21, Sam. He rarely misses. Um, but you'd have to say, early in this game, Limerick usually coming out with the ball, very difficult to get it off. Clare putting them under serious pressure, and they're not getting the quality ball into the full forward line that, that they're used to. Here comes Dermot Burns then, standing on his own 65-yard line. Looks to the target, picks this one and strikes it. Distance won't be a problem, nor will the accuracy. The radar is on for Dermot Burns, who gets his second long-range free of the evening. And we're back to a two-point game, 9-7, to seven, 21 minutes played of the opening half. Clare have gone short with the puck out to Conor Cleary. And then in the second phase, go long towards Shane O'Donnell. Broken down, won by McCarthy. There's this off to Tony Kelly. Here's a chance! Sent by Nicky Quaid and off the post and out for a 65. That was a glorious opportunity. Tony Kelly put it past Nicky Quaid, but the butt of the post saved Limerick. How important is Nicky Quaid to this Limerick team? Aidan McCarthy again, over to Tony, does everything right, low. Just hit off his leg, off the post, but all good goalies do that, to put their body in the way. Well, what about that? We've had goal opportunities at both end. Tony Kelly coming the closest, off the leg of Nicky Quaid, and deflected to the post. Brilliant, brilliant goal, Gabriel, and in fairness, great movement from the clear forwards. What I have noticed in the first, uh, you know, the first 21 minutes, Liam, is Usually teams leave Limerick with an extra defender because they're going so far back the field. They're man on man nearly every so when that ball came broke, clear a equal amount of players as Limerick, so there's no lad there to come out with the ball and they're creating chances off the back of it. Sean Finn was receiving a bit of treatment back there. He's okay though, and play is going to resume with this 65 for Clare and an opportunity for them here now. Brian Lone, well, he'll be delighted. His side, I don't think he'd have been too displeased with how his side performed last week, but it was just the concession of those goals really, really hurt them. And here they're giving some performance in the opening 23 minutes. An opportunity now for Aidan McCarthy to get his fourth point of the evening and to push Clare three to the good. And he makes no mistake about it from the 65. Aidan McCarthy with his fourth of the evening and Clare by three. Short puck out from Nicky Quaid to Barry Nash. Nash long down this near side then towards Cahill O'Neill and again the breaking ball will favour Limerick on this occasion. Tom Morrissey sets off on a run. He's got support on the shoulder. The support was from Peter Casey. But Tom Morrissey was being pulled back, says the referee. He tried to play the advantage. There was none forthcoming and it's going to be a free. The free going in favour of Limerick. Here we see Morrissey again. Yeah. Just a hurley around the neck there for Cahill Malone. Yeah, it's always harsh myself at the start when I see the replay on the television, obviously the arms around the neck. That started off with a sharp puck out lean. The difference was Limerick put four men in the full back line with a spare man back, first time today. Here comes Aaron Galan with the free, midway between the 21 and the 45 metre line, striking this one into the city in terrace. And Aaron Galan gets his third point of the evening. Is it any wonder John Kiley takes a deep breath of exhale of air? It's been one of those championship games. 24 minutes gone, 18 scores between the two sides. That ain't bad so far. Puck out down the centre of the field. Dermot Burns trying to win possession of it. Breaks behind him. Peter Casey back in his own half back line. Dan Morrissey is under all sorts of pressure. But the referee has said his hand was being held. It's not the first time that uh, Cullum Lyons has given a free for a hand being pulled. It's going to be a free, free going in favour of Limerick. Dermot Burns, surely too far back. He's not. I was in Hurlis last week, and it was the same place, about 90 yards out. He hits them all. He hit, I'd say it was two from two last week. Like giving away a free to Limerick at that end of the field. It's like giving away that the other end of the field to normal teams. Donald O'Grady, Limerick, uh, former Limerick captain, and uh, now, of course, selector with Limerick in to dry the Schlitter here for Dermot Burns as he assesses his options. He opts to go short this time. Gets the return ball again on his own defensive 65-metre line, decides to open the shoulders, Giniflex as he strikes it, but it goes to the left-hand side and wide, third wide of the game, but again, you see the pressure that he was under. Tony Kelly putting a serious shift in underneath us in the stand. Puck out. Goes short again from Aver Quilligan to Conor Cleary. 
sends this one long up the field on the second phase of play. And it's clear who have it brilliantly blocked down. It was John Conlon that was going to uh, have a shot there. Breaks out towards Ryan Taylor. Now finds Dermot Ryan tight towards that sideline. Dermot Ryan almost fell over as he struck it. He was well off balance, but that has gone right and wide. Another wide for Clare. That is now, by my reckoning, their fifth wide of the evening. There you see the block from William O'Donoghue on John Conlon. Play is already underway. As Sean Finn comes away with this one. Gives a reverse hand pass there. Finds Dan Morrissey. Doesn't win that cleanly. Plays this one towards the centre of the field, but it's picked up there by Carl Malone. Malone plays this one now towards Peter Casey. Declan Hannan wins possession of it. Hannan from the halfway line. Last year he was good for a couple of long-range scores, but that has gone to the left and wide. Fourth wide of the game for Limerick. It is, and ten points there. Sharp puck out again. Sure is, it's clear through Dearman to Ryan, half possession of it on that far side. Oh, the look at Ryan Taylor, who's found himself completely free on that far side. Ryan Taylor striking this one in. We leave that to the umpire, it's gone right and wide. Sixth wide of the evening for Clare, but Taylor was left in oceans of space over there. Yeah, well, you can't take your eyes off on your player for, for a minute, because if he's a half-back or a cornerback, he's gone shooting up. Nicky Quaid's puck out long down the centre of the field again. Keen Lynch breaks this one down where it's picked up over there by Peter Casey. A challenge goes in there. Tom Morrissey was... Uh, Peter Casey wasn't too sure what happened. It was John Conlon and uh, Cahill O'Neill, I think, that uh, had a coming together, if you want to call it that. Colm Lyons is just happy enough that it's just going to be a warning. Mm. It's a third-man tackle, but it was unintentional. Well, no, it was, was it? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you have to say, like, I know there's a lot of wides in that, but it's been so much so far, Liam. It's just enthralling. It's like the old Munster Championship. It is. It's a, a throwback to the good old days, and a lot of Limerick supporters will remember 1996 here, and, of course, Kieran Carey scoring that late point in the end. His nephew, Keen Lynch, of course, wearing number 11 today. And Clare and Limerick over the last couple of seasons have produced absolute belters, none more so than the two games in the group stages. They finished level in the Munster Championship final, they finished level, but Limerick won after extra time. Three, dropping short. Who's going to be alert to it? The answer to that is Declan Hannan. Finds the support from Barry Nash. Referee plays the advantage. Three, going in favour of Limerick. The Clare supporters aren't too happy with that, but free nonetheless. You're going to defend the corner back here, aren't you, and say it was always a free. <laughs> Mickey Quaid going to take this one. Just looking for a few options and nothing really too major appealing, jumping out at him straight away, so he opts to launch this one long. Tom Morrissey will probably be underneath it, as will David McInerney. They're the two battling for it. It eventually gets into the hand of Carl O'Neill, who sets off on a run. Open space in front of O'Neill. Here's a chance for Carl O'Neill. Brilliant block. And the ball across the centre, and it's Seamus Flanagan, who just taps it home. But was he in the square? That's the clear argument. They're absolutely incensed. They're surrounding Cullen Lines. They claim that Seamus Flanagan was inside in the square. Let's have a look at it. Carl O'Neill got the shot, he was well hooked, had the presence of mind to get it across the centre. Was Seamus Flanagan standing inside there, though? Uh, he was in it all right, so it's when he hits it. You won't see it from that angle, but you would have seen it from the previous angle, Liam. We could get the one from behind the goals, that's probably the clearest one, but... Here we go, the referee just having a chat with the clear players and just telling them all to move away. Controversy surrounding the opening goal of the championship game tonight. Here we go. You see there? No. One foot in, one foot out. Well, if, if you're in it, you're in it. Um, I think it's brilliant referee. You have to say it's Colin Lines, and he's been excellent so far. He's in there, common sense, probably under a bit of pressure. The whole stadium looking at him, 34, 35,000 people in there chatting to his umpires, experienced, and he'll make a... A decision now in a few moments. David Fitzgerald, by the way, picked up the yellow card, as we see there. They're having a chat. What are they deciding? The goal is wow. given. The goal stands. 
Well, we've looked at it a couple of times, but we still can't tell, so it's very hard, in fairness, for the umpires and referees. You know, he has to go off. He has no cameras to look at. He has to go off his initial reaction. Goal is given, and all of a sudden, the decibels level in the Gaelic grounds increase significantly. What will Clare respond with? Brilliant take out of the air by William O'Donovan. O'Donoghue. Off from this near side towards the goal scorer, Shamie Flanagan. He's two earlies in his hand. Cahill O'Neill off towards Declan Hannan. Keane Lynch was roaring for it, and Keane Lynch strikes this one in, but it has gone to the left-hand side and wide. Fifth of the game for Limerick, but the puck out is already on its way. David Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald launches this long. Inside it goes towards Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly looks up for the option, strikes this one in. Is it the levelling score? No is the answer to that. That is the seventh wide of the game. Seventh wide. Well, they've looked at it in the truck a good few times and we're being told that Seamus Flanagan, when that ball was struck across, was outside the square. So the goal was a legitimate goal, as given as Tom Morrissey wins possession of this. Peter Casey on his near side. Aaron Galan coming towards him. Gives it towards Peter Casey. 21 metres out, couple in from the sideline. Peter Casey looks up, strikes it across the centre. William O'Donoghue has it, lost his footing at the vital moment. Tom Morrissey arrives to offer support, but the referee has said it's going to be a free in, a free going in favour of Limerick on the 21 metre line. The clear supporters aren't happy, they feel a couple of decisions have gone against them. Yeah, in the last few moments, but... Ferris called him, he said he went down on him to bring it back across to the middle now. The big players for Limerick are really stepping up. Tom Morris has been brilliant, Will Donahue has been brilliant, Flanagan, they're all showing for it. When the, when the pressure is at its grace, the big players step up. Column Lyons has, as Tommy said, brought it dead straight in front of the post. Well, Brian Lohan would have been absolutely delighted with how things were going from a clear point of view. Might feel a little aggrieved, but we'll wait and see. Aaron Gillahan, still plenty of time in this one. 32 minutes have just absolutely flown by, though, as Aaron Gillahan picks this and strikes it between the uprights. Fourth point of the evening from Aaron Gillahan, all from freeze. And suddenly from it, two points up there, two points down, and that's what this Limerick team can do to you. Here comes the puck out from Aver Quilligan, sends it down this near side, two Limerick players underneath it. Dermot Burns, Declan Hannan in their battling as well as Aidan McCarthy. Out comes Shane O'Donnell. O'Donnell had it in his hand, lost it. Very tight to the sideline. Tom Morrissey is brilliantly shielded out. That is super defence from Adam Hogan. He had no hurley, so all he did was just hold his hands out and just make sure that it went out over this near sideline. Super defence from Adam Hogan. Yeah, and Adam only made his debut last week. It's some baptism of fire for him. Look, Tom Morrissey. Doesn't panic, shields him out, no free. Morrissey claimed he was pushed, I don't think the referee was going to give it. Meanwhile, Adam Hogan is down receiving a bit of treatment. He's no hurley, the hurley is just lying on the centre of the field. He's now on the field, he's gone down. He's claiming it's a, a head injury, so Colin Lyons is coming over just to have a look at it. Brian Lohan discussing with the fourth official down beneath us as well. Is there blood? Colin Lyons has given the indication that he is have to go off Adam Hogan, but there is blood. So all of that just cools it down a small little bit. Paul Flanagan, I think, is the man that's going to come on for him. Was named to start, but he'll be on shortly as David McInerney lines up this line ball. Takes it, last touches off Peter Casey and comes for another line ball for Clare down this near side. Just looking at Limerick, they've only one man, Aaron Galan, inside their own 65. They're all back around the middle third. Dermot Burns is back in his own, Hannon is back in his own. Lynch is on his own. Here comes Tony Kelly's sideline ball, cut out by Peter Casey. And there is the free man now, working his way forward. Hannon to Donoghue, back again towards Hannon, forward towards Seamus Flanagan, Limerick. Sweeping forward here now as Flanagan pops the ball towards Tom Morrissey. You've seen an awful lot of ball in that opening half. Dara Donovan under all sorts of pressure from Ryan Taylor. It's an illegal challenge, though, on Dara Donovan by Ryan Taylor, says the referee. It's going to be a free, free going in favour of Limerick. Here it is again. Yeah, yeah, yeah around the neck, I suppose. Once they put in the, 
arm around the neck, the referee has to call it. And Flanagan set that up that one again. Like there's no school teacher of mine, um, Dennis Philfoff from Cork. He said, Go after the ball like you love it. And Flanagan is indeed the best example you could ever see of that. Here comes the free from Dermot Burns then. Two points so far in this game, both from long range frees. He'll be hoping for a third. Two additional minutes, as you can see on the screen there, as Burns strikes this into the City End Terrace. Puts it between the uprights. Third point of the night for Dermot Burns. And Limerick, all of a sudden, from two points down, as Tommy Walsh said, now lead by three. 110 to 10 as we hit to half time. Ever Quilligan. Not quite sure what he wants to do with this one. He's going to go along with it down the centre of the field. Won by Kyle Hayes. Up against him there was Cahill Malone blocking his way to it. Dara Donovan as well managed to get the ball. Claire reckoned it was thrown. Kyle Hayes trying to find his way through. Brought to ground as Claire launched defence to attack. Ball inside towards Mark Rogers. Under pressure as Rogers. Pops the ball across the centre. This could work out remarkably well for Ryan Taylor, who strikes this one from a long way out. Clare needed a score, and they've gotten it. Compliments of Ryan Taylor. Scored two last week, has gotten his first tonight. Yes, and what a set up by Mark Rogers. You need fierce patience inside that full far line, and he has exactly that. Puck out from Nicky Quaid. Finds Sean Finn short. As Finn goes long then with that towards Carl O'Neill, it's going to beat everybody though, Carl O'Neill and John Conlon, and go out over that far sideline. So much to talk about at half time. Looking forward to a breather, I have to be honest with you, but uh, there's plenty for the lads to have a chat with Gronio with. They will analyse the opening 37 or so minutes very shortly, but can Clare get a, another score before half time and cut that gap to one? Or can they get, will they be able to sweep up the field in the last 10 odd seconds or so? David McInerney to take this line ball for Clare. It's a good one. Up towards Ryan Taylor, who gathers it. Taylor down that far side towards David Fitzgerald. Long ball inside. Peter Duggan. Duggan is there on the 13. Here's a chance for Duggan. Oh. Brilliantly saved by Nicky Quaid again. Over the crossbar, it could have been worse for Limerick. Peter Duggan gets a point. Nicky Quaid gets a pat from Barry Nash as Peter Duggan scores his first point of the evening. Yeah, and look at this, not too many. Sean Finn went down with an injured ankle, he hurt it early. But bouncing into the ground, Nicky Quaid is having some first half. There is the half-time whistle. What a reaction from both sets of supporters to the what we've seen in the first half. But Sean Finn is down. There is a big concern from a Limerick point of view. It's Sean Finn, Mark Melbourne, the physio is in with him. Dr James Ryan has arrived as well. That will be the concern for Limerick in the opening half. But what a cracking first half it's been. One point between them here at half-time. Analysis to come in just a couple of moments. I think we all need a breather, though, on a half-time scoreline of Limerick. One goal and ten. Clare, 12 points. Thanks very much, Gronio. Welcome back. Well, what a second half well, is in store. If it's half as good as the first half, we're in for a belter. Tommy, all the talk up here is that it's been as good a first half of hurling as we've seen in quite a while. Yeah, Liam, the, the first 25 minutes were absolutely epic. Just a, a, a throwback to the old days where everyone was going at man v man battles. Mike Casey's on, Sean Finn is off. That's the change. So here we go. Second half is underway at the TUS Gaelic Grounds, and uh, it's Limerick straight away winning possession of it. That uh, loss, the lads touched on it there. Sean Finn going off at half-time injured. Mike Casey replaces him, but what a replacement to bring on in his stead. Here come Clare, looking to start the second half. We like how they finished, as David Fitzgerald off as far as Shane O'Donnell. O'Donnell from a long way out, sends it in and sends it over. The referee was playing the advantage. It's Shane O'Donnell's first point of championship 2023. I suggest it won't be his last. No, and he didn't play the National Hurling League again this year, so it's going to take him a game or two to get up to the pace of the game. Puck out, sent down the centre, level game, 40-odd seconds into the second half. This is what we want for Munster Championship hurling. Keen Lynch brilliantly blocked down by Adam Hogan on that occasion. Look at Shane O'Donnell back in his own half-back line after scoring a point in the other end of the field. 
under pressure, comes away with it, still going Shane O'Donnell, ends up on the ground. What about that for an amount of ground that he covered for a man that's only back for a couple of games? Free going in favour. JP McManus, of course, watching on. He would have been in Punchestown, I'm sure, earlier today, but uh, here we see the run of Shane O'Donnell, eventually halted by Dermot Burns, and this free for Clare. There's a, the block on Keen Lynch by Adam Hogan. Meanwhile, back up with it. Aidan McCarthy with this effort. Four points in the first half, two from play, a free and a 65. He'll be hoping to increase that just off camera. Keen Lynch is down receiving treatment just down here in front of us. We'll keep an eye on that as well. As here comes the opportunity for Aidan McCarthy to strike this one in. Is it the lead score for Clare? The answer to that is yes. Aidan McCarthy with the point over the crossbar. Two minutes gone in the second half. Keen Lynch's day is done. True. What a man to bring on, though, to replace him. There is Keane Lynch going off and coming on is Garrod Hegarty. To bring on a hurler of the year, a two-time man of the match in the All-Ireland final. I see David Fitzgerald is picking up Kyle Hayes, Tony Kelly's on Barry Nash. And Clare back into the lead as the puck out goes down that far side of the field. Clare again winning possession of this one. Carl Malone looks up tight towards that sideline. They've just ran out of space. Malone's ball to Dermot Ryan. Ryan just ran out of yardage on that far side and this is going to be... Line ball. Here's the injury to Keen Lynch. You just see change in direction there and just held his leg. And slight concern from a Limerick point of view, but uh, well, he's off now as this ball is sent forward and Clare looking to capitalise on this. Limerick, of course, with 40 men last week against Waterford. They still have the 15 here as Tony Kelly races down that far sideline. Kelly striking that one in, but it's gone to the right and wide. Clare hits seven first half wides. That is his eighth wide. There's an interested manager, Davy Fitzgerald. He'll be heading to the banks of the Lee tomorrow for his side. And no doubt hoping that his native county will win here this evening. 14 to 110. Block. Tom Morrissey picks up possession of this one. He knew the minute it left his stick that it went to the left and wide. Sixth wide of the night for Limerick. And will O'Donnell dispossess again? Will O'Donnell have some, some first half, a great second half? Here it is. He's just there, he's everywhere. Puck out to come again from Ever Quilligan and the goal to our left-hand side. That's the clear-in goal, as it's affectionately known here in the Gaelic rounds as the ball breaks down. And won by Limerick again, Will O'Donoghue, who just couldn't get it into his hand. And instead it's Clare who are coming away with this one. That's Aidan McCarthy. Gives the hand pass towards David Fitzgerald. Wasn't alert to it in the first case. Might get to it. That's beautiful skill from Fitzgerald. Lays it now again towards McCarthy, who started it. Across towards Peter Duggan. Duggan brilliantly blocked down inside there. And William O'Donoghue is back there, but Duggan has won it back. Shot from Duggan. It's into the net. Goal for Clare. Nicky Quaid, who had a flawless first half, will be disappointed with it. But Peter Duggan gets the goal to add to a point he gotten already. And Clare lead by four. And oh, what a goal. Duggan, the big man, he loses and wins it back. Here's the replay. Azar with Davy Fitz kept it from going out over the line. In it comes. Watch Duggan. Sticks with it. Catch. Greasy into the back of the net. Well, what about that? Game well and truly on now, I can tell you, in front of a, an attendance of 30,460 this evening at the Gaelic Grounds. They're all enthralled by what's unfolding before our very eyes. We all are, as this ball played forward, again cut out by Clare. David McInerney plays this one forward, but Barry Nash is back there. Picks it up for Limerick. Nash looking to find his way. Up against him, David Fitzgerald. Ball laid across the centre, won by Kyle Hayes. Takes on the challenge, referee plays the advantage. Shamie Flanagan right on this near stand sideline. John Kiley throws the arms in the air and Ryan Taylor is going to be in a bit of trouble here. Referee, well, thought about taking out a card, then decided against it. I don't think it warranted it, really, but Shamie Flanagan's route to goal was certainly being blocked. He had the hard work done. He just needed to shadow him out over the line and he was never going to score from there, but... You know, Flanagan again, Barry Nash is starting to come more into the game. He's given him more free roll, so he's on Tony Kelly at the moment, but Tony's roving out around the middle of the field and his own, and the lad said earlier on, it's a dangerous thing to bring Barry Nash out. 
That's the clear supporters that are making the noise. They're shouting clear, clear, clear. They believe that this could be the day. Four points be ahead. But Limerick, if they'll not do anything, they certainly won't panic. As here comes Aaron Galan. Lines this one up from this near side of the field. Strikes it in. It started right. Has it come back in? No is the answer. It has gone right and wide. We were right behind it, Tommy. I thought it might just curl inside, but it's gone to the right and wide. Seventh wide for Limerick. Puck out from Aver Quilligan yet again. Away to the left-hand side. Launches this one long, right down the centre of the field. Brilliantly caught in the air by Barry Nash, and that's what Nash can do. Finds Tom Morrissey, gets a shoulder on the ground, lays it towards Carl O'Neill. Here's an opportunity for O'Neill, which he has struck between the uprights. Super point from Carl O'Neill, won by Barry Nash in the half-back line. Won by Nash, out again to Tom Morrissey and over to young O'Neill, and he's saying, John Kiley, pick me. I want to stay on this team. He's certainly putting the hand up for the call. As Aver Quilligan yet again with this puck out. Sends it down this near side. Kyle Hayes breaks it down. The breaking ball is going to go where? Peter Casey covered an amount of ground to come together that. The road Hegarty goes to ground. You have to do a lot more than that to win a free in tonight's game. The ball is with David McInerney. Pops this one back and away come clear from deep inside their own half. Pull on the jersey. The referee has said a collision coming there. Dara Donovan's Hurley has gone into the stand. The referee, Colin Lyons, is just going to have a chat. Here we go. There was a yellow card there. Charging? I was, yeah, absolutely. You go up front to charging to anybody when you're coming out with the ball. It's, it was a bigger man, maybe. It was Peter Casey, though, so he, you know, it was going to look more obvious. Rory Hayes then picks up a yellow card for that challenge. Three between them as Aaron Galan lines this one up. He's hit a wide a couple of moments ago. Let's see what this one is. It's a lot closer. It's about 40 metres out. It's only about seven in from the sideline. John Kiley watches with the arms. As here comes Aaron Galan, we're right behind this one. It has just snuck inside the left hand upright, but just snuck inside is enough. Fifth point of the night from Aaron Galan, all from freeze. And we're back to a two point game. Yeah, and the champions have responded back to two points already. They've won 17 games in a row. Kilkenny are on top with 21 in a row from the mid 2000s. They overtook Tipperary last week. They're looking to chase down that record. Dara Donovan goes off the field of play. He's replaced by David Reedy, the Drummond Atlaka club map. Puck out down the centre of the field. William O'Donoghue battling for it. There's battles all over the field as Garoud Hegarty plays this one forward towards Aaron Galan. 45 out. Galan striking that one. Beautiful from Aaron Galan. Back to a one point game. And Aaron Galan gets his first point from play. Yes, and double trouble with Galan and Flanagan inside. If one of them's not causing you trouble, the other is. Puck out, already on its way, as Conor Cleary launches this one long down the centre of the field. Breaking ball, David Reedy can't pick up possession of it for Limerick. The referee has said it was thrown up and caught by uh, Carl Malone. Or not caught, as the case might be, and it's going to be a free. Free going in favour of Limerick. He's claiming he didn't have control of the ball anyway, but free for Limerick. Here we'll see it again, Tommy. Yeah, no, he actually had it blown. Watch, he was about to do it, but dropped it. See, yeah. the, the whistle was blown, so... John Kiley and Paul Kinnerk. Kinnerk, of course, was coach for Clare. And they won the All-Ireland. Davy Fitzgerald as manager. Now very much ensconced in this Limerick. Set up as Dumit Burns. Lines this up from his own 65-metre line. Pretty much dead straight in front of the post. Burns has been unerring so far, and that record has continued. His fourth point of the night from long range, and that's the response that Limerick gave to the clear goal. We're level. Ah, he's worth his weight in goals. Dermot Burns, like he's probably the best free scoring half back since Shawnee McMahon, and he's after taking it to new levels. Well, we have an injury to a clear player. I think it's uh, Mark Rogers that's down back there. It is. Rogers has received his treatment, and referee Carl Lines has said, "Off we go." 
And now the two sets of supporters get behind their teams, the Limerick supporters, who haven't tasted defeat in the Munster Championship in quite a while, chanting Limerick, Limerick, as the puck out sent down this near side of the field. The ball won by Clare. This very much like the Munster Championship game against Waterford last year, but can Clare see this one out as Tony Kelly heads forward with this one onto the 21. Tony Kelly sends it between the uprights. He's third point of the night for the Clare captain, and he's on song this evening. He is, and it was great vision to pick him out earlier because it looked like David McInerney was all held up. But Puck out is already gone and sent from Kyle Hayes towards Aaron Galan. The two white helmets combining. Patrick Swellman finds Tom Morrissey, picks up possession of it, screaming for it was Mike Casey across the centre, but Tom Morrissey has struck that one to the right and wide for the eighth wide of the night for Limerick. They're level on the wides count, eight wides apiece, and on the scoreboard where it all matters, it's clear by one, 12 minutes into the second half. What a game so far. David McInerney is now picking up Hegarty since he came on, just with a couple of substitutions. Mike Casey's inside. Puck out from Quilligan, again sent down this near side of the field, but it's Kyle Hayes who picks up possession of it for Limerick, tight towards this sideline. Hayes gives the ball towards Declan Hannan. Hannan up on this near sideline, sends a crossfield ball in towards Seamus Flanagan, pops it down, Aaron Galan can't get to it, but Clare just living a bit dangerously, but they bring this one away in the shape of Rory Hayes. Hayes decides to play it back across the centre and picked up now by Aver Quilligan under pressure from Mike Casey of all people inside there. In fact, it was David Reedy. Comes away with this one now. On towards the defensive 45. Now on to the 65. Brought to ground Ryan Taylor. The Clare supporters are loving that, that they've gotten a free. Ah, that was inspirational. He was backed into a corner. Never say never. Out he goes and is foul because he's going so fast through the tackles. It's a greasy service too. If you go down, you'll get your freeze. Three, four lads in and tackling him. Kyle Hayes is really after coming into the game as well, Liam, for, for Limerick. The big players, Galan, the last 10 minutes, Tom Morrissey, they're really after Sean. Free for clear, then Tony Kelly has come back to take this one. He's inside his own 45. There's the, there's the angle that Tony Kelly is facing. Here it comes. He's a long, long way back, though. He's stolen a couple of yards. He struck it almost on his own 65. It's going to drop in. Dermot Burns is underneath it. Comes away with this one. Runs into a clear wall, and the referee has said the clear wall pulled him down illegally. And part of that wall was Peter Duggan, the goal scorer. Free out. Going in favour of Limerick. And Colin Lyons, I think, might have brought it out a couple of yards as well. It's right in the melting pot here, Tommy. It's anybody's game. It is, 115 to 114. Clare still in the lead. They're still in the lead. Real typical Brian Lohan. Even things going against him the last couple of minutes. Still up by a pint. 20 minutes to go. And... What a 20 minutes in store. As Dermot Burns lines up this free. Midway between his own 21 and 45. What'll he do with it? Do you know, he's having a go at this one. The distance won't be a problem, it's just tail to the right-hand side and wide. Ninth wide of the game for Limerick, nine wides for Limerick, eight wides for Clare, as the puck out already simped down this near side to David Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald sets off on a run, Limerick fans claim he took a step too many, but Cahill O'Neill chasing him, Fitzgerald gets the ball away, back goes David Reedy, picks up possession of it, Clare man on the ground, referee says play away, and that's exactly what Kyle Hayes does. Pulled to ground on his own defensive 65. And John Kiley and Paul Kanark are down here beneath us. They're applauding their team's efforts. Yeah, and generally, Dave Fitzgerald is down here just under, underneath. He's in the stand. He turned the ball over Kyle Hayes' head, but I suppose Colin is saying that he ran into him then. We'll see here in the coverage. You know, nine times out of ten, you'll probably get a free there, but over the course of a game, anyway, frees to kind of go for and against you and it balances itself out. But... Limerick, I think, got the benefit of that one. Clare by one. As here, David Fitzgerald, thankfully from a clear point of view, is back to his feet. Five minutes since Limerick's last score. Four for Clare. As Dermot Burns lines up this one. There you see it inside his own 65-yard line. 
look at the intense look at the target as Burns strikes this one. It's gone though to the right hand side and wide. He's second wide, he's first from a free. The last one was from general play and it brings Limerick to 10 wides on the night. They still trail by one. Clare 150, Limerick 140. David Reedy in possession of it down that far side. Reedy going forward. Came on last year in a couple of big games and scored a few decisive scores, but that one has gone left and wide for wide number 11. And it'll be interesting to see Limerick's substitutions. They didn't really make a big impact last week when they came on. How will they get on here in the last 15, well, 19 minutes? Aver Quilligan sends this one down that far side. Declan Hannan is there to win possession of it. Hannan very tight towards the sideline. It's gone out over the sideline. Declan Hannan took it out, says the linesman. It's going to be a line ball going in favour of Clare on that far side of the TUS Gaelic grounds this evening. Not one person leaving this grounds. Why would they? We're being treated to an absolute cracker of a Munster Championship game on a Saturday night of a bank holiday weekend as the line ball sent inside. Nicky Quaid pops this one towards Dermot Burns from his own 21-yard line, plays this forward. Aaron Galan just spins away, breaks towards Shamey Flanagan. Flanagan, 45 out from goal. Gives the hand pass towards Tom Morrissey. Nobody inside from a Limerick point of view. Tom Morrissey has levelled us up. He gets his second point of the evening and it brings us level yet again. Limerick and Clare at 1.15 apiece. Morrissey has some detail and the reason that was struck long by Burns, there's only two lads, two on two inside. When the opportunity to go along is there, they'll do it. Aver Quilligan's long ball. David Reedy is one possession of this one. Back in his own 45 metre line. Plays this one forward. Galan again starts behind his man. And his man on this occasion is John Conlon. Pops the pass across towards David McInerney. Long ball sent forward. Barry Nash up. Very tight towards this sideline. It was Shane O'Donnell and Barry Nash in a tussle for it. The linesman has decided it was Barry Nash that touched it last and it's going to be a line ball for Clare. And there's John Keane and the linesman. What a performance he gave in last year's Munster final. One of the greatest Munster finals in history. The two of them went for it. Well, yeah, it looked like Nash's hurl. Yeah. So John Keenan, eagle-eyed as ever on this near sideline, giving the correct call. And Mark Rogers will look to capitalise on this. That's a fair cut of the ball. Beautiful in, despite the best efforts of Nicky Quaid. That is superb from Mark Rogers. A sideline. Well, there's a big debate. Should it be worth two points? Probably worth it. Super. Yeah, and Rogers, he's patient. He's a great corner forward. He's patient and takes his chances when opportunity is there now. And Claire Habit, here is the aforementioned Rogers looking for two in a row, which he has gotten. And all of a sudden, Clare extend their lead back to two again. It's from the stick of Mark Rogers this time. And Clare by two. The puck out is already on its way, though. David Reedy battling for it down here beneath us. Gets it back. Kyle Hayes picks up possession of it. Tries to shrug away from the challenge of Dermot Ryan. Hayes finds Paul O'Neill on this near side. O'Neill from the 21. What a response from Limerick and Paul O'Neill. What a game. Pick me. That's all I see when I see him putting the ball over the bar. He's there the last couple of years. He wants to get in on this team and back to a one-point game. One between them. 19 minutes played of the second half. And the bad news is there's only 16 minutes left of this. We could watch it for the next two weeks as the puck out goes long. Barry Nash breaks it down. Declan Hannan has it on his own defensive 45. Now towards Carl O'Neill. O'Neill trying to burst away. He has the advantage. There was none forthcoming. It's going to be a free. The free is going in favour of Limerick. Back in their own defence of 65. Garod Hegarty thought about taking it quickly, but I think Dermot Burns will have a little chat with him about that. Well, off camera, Seamus Flanagan is the only lad inside, let's say, 45, 50 metres. I'd give it in. Well, Donald O'Grady is the Limerick selector. He's also the mayor, come on, Ishka, and he has gotten a yellow card. He was a great midfielder. Great leader, that Limerick team, but they weren't winning all Ireland, but he was super, winning Munsters, and great leader of that team. Captain of the team that won the Munster Championship in 2014, of course. Never to be forgotten day for Limerick fans here at the Gaelic Grounds. Here comes Dermot Burns as he strikes this one in. Do you know what? We're level again. Dermot Burns gets his fifth point of the evening, all from freeze, and with 15 minutes left. We're level at 117 apiece. Yeah, he must have been taking the freeze out in Dubai. He was out there for a couple of months. He's better than ever since he came back. 
Puck out, sent down this near side. Won by Shane O'Donnell. Lays this off as far as David Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald striking this one in. Beautiful from David Fitzgerald. How about that for a response for Clare? David Fitzgerald with his second point. Of course, missed the game the last day out due to suspension. But he's certainly back. Two points in this game. How crucial they could be. And Clare back into the lead by one again. Puck out, sent near side of the field. A breaking ball. William O'Donoghue in there trying to battle for it. But it's his opposite number, Carl Malone. Was he pushed? Probably was. The referee says no. He's going to stop the play and just throw it in between a couple of players. Just on the 65. William O'Donoghue, David McInerney, the two of them initially. The referee doesn't want uh, that. He wants Ryan Taylor and William O'Donoghue in there. Kyle Hayes was certainly pulled back, and John Kiley gives a fist pump on this sideline for his team winning a free. It's going to be a free going in favour of Limerick, and here we see it. Kyle Hayes certainly pulled back and dragged back there, and this free and an opportunity for Aaron Galan to get his sixth point, seventh point, I should say, of the night to try and level things up again. Galan looking at the target. Midway between the 45 and the 65. Going to strike this one into the goal to our left-hand side. Aaron Galan has struck that one, but he has sent it left and wide. His radar is off from some of them frees today. Sharp puck out quick again to Dermot. 12th wide of the night for Limerick. Well, you'd have put the house in Aaron Galan to knock that one between the uprights. He sent it wide, and we're still at a one-point game. Garoud Hegarty goes in with the challenge. Ball breaks to Adam Hogan. Away he comes. Up against him is Peter Casey. Hogan trying to find his way through. Pull to ground, says the referee. Peter Casey disagrees, as do the Limerick contingent and the 30-odd thousand people here at the Gaelic grounds tonight. But here we see it again. Runs into him. Peter Casey holds his hands out. And it's one of these ones that could go either which way. And Adam Hogan is happy enough with that one. You know, at first, probably big derby for him. Meanwhile, we're back with the free now for Aidan McCarthy. Five points so far in this game. For the Ina Kilnamona club man. Looks to the target. Hitting into the City Inn Terrace. Crouches over it, picks this and strikes it. It sets sail on its way. Has it sailed between the uprights? Yes, it has. Clear by two as Aidan McCarthy gets another one to his target. 119 to 117, two point lead. Puck out has already gone to Barry Nash. Long ball sent forward, Cahill O'Neill. Taken away from him, and Clare come away from this one. Out over this near sideline, and it's gone for a line ball in favour of Limerick. And Dear Conlon is down, and he'd be a loss if he went off, because he's the centre of that defence, he's the foundation, he's the rock, he spreads left, he spreads right. Could be a dead leg, but... Dear right number five, is having a great second half. Here we see it. In he goes, just, yeah, Shami Flanagan just arrived in. But Clare making a change, Peter Duggan is the man to go off, and on in his place is Aaron Shanaher. So the goal scorer comes off, and Aaron Shanaher is the man that has come on the field of play. Line ball taken by Tom Morrissey. Shami Flanagan was being pulled and dragged inside there, says the referee. The Clare man reckons it was the other way around, but... Seamus Flanagan looked the... And now it's been brought forward a further couple of yards. Here we see it again, Tommy. Six yeah, and one half dozen of another, really. It is. Well, he was fouling him, but he was claiming that Seamus Flanagan was fouling him before that, so... Referee didn't see it. The Ron Dyes in the back of your head to watch half the stuff going on with the referee now really lean, you know? Change of free-taker for Limerick. Aaron Galan being replaced now by Tom Morrissey on the freeze. This one... Right on the 21 metre line. Two between them, striking it into the terrace where the vast bulk of the clear supporters are. It's Tom Morrissey won't be put off by them. He gets his third point of the night. He's first from a free. 
and Limerick are back to within one of clear, 119-118, and it's in the melting pot for the last eight minutes. It is, we're heading into squeaky bum time now with ten minutes to go. Down in Limerick, they're one point up. Puck out, sent down this near side. Kyle Hayes puts up the hand. Declan Hannan in there as well. Shane O'Donnell was in there. Ball not really coming up cleanly to anybody. Scooped out and the man to react first to it was Dermot Ryan. Long ball sent inside. Brilliantly caught inside. Here's an opportunity. Oh, what a block from Mike Casey. It was won by Aaron Shanahan and Casey gets the block in and Limerick get the ball up the field. Tom Morrissey, Carl O'Neill is screaming for it. He might need rollerblades to get onto that one. Not the pace at this stage of the game and Adam Hogan gathers possession of it, now lays this one towards Carl Malone, under pressure, Malone finds Tony Kelly, Kelly away with this one towards the 65, ball inside there, referee says play away, it comes away and Shane O'Donnell does exactly that, O'Donnell has been fouled, referee has played the advantage, there was none forthcoming, three for Shane O'Donnell and a yellow card as well, just flashed inside there, not quite sure who it was, there we see the take, and look at this for a block from Mike Casey. Superb, Tommy. And people ask, like, what do you love about the game? When you have the man-on-man battles, that ball came in, we all knew Shannon was a ball winner, catches it, in comes Mike Casey, the great defender, and takes it back off, and the crowd are on their feet. Everybody loves it. Clear or brilliant that win their own ball, Liam, and that's why they're in this game. Two super pieces of skill from either side. A brilliant take by Shanahan and an even better block from Casey. And here we are now with Aidan McCarthy, to take this free, midway between the 45 and the 65, striking this one into the town end terrace again. This would increase the lead to two if Clare were to get this one. Seven and a bit minutes left, plus whatever will be added as Aidan McCarthy sends this one in and sends it over the crossbar. Point for Aidan McCarthy, another one for him. Limerick making a substitution, but Aidan McCarthy has added to his tally. He got 113 the last day, and now he's adding to the tally again. Graham Mulcahy, the ever present man since Limerick started winning those All Irelands in 2018, is back on the field of play. Peter Casey is the man to make way. Puck out down that far side. Tom Morrissey got a vital block and Aaron Galan wins possession of it. Back to David Reedy. Low ball inside. Tom Morrissey peeled away, continued his run. Mark Flanagan free across the centre. Morrissey goes himself and fizzes it over the crossbar. He saw the glory. He's gotten his fourth point and we're back to one. But it could have been an awful lot worse for Clare. Oh, could have been a goal. Here he is, Morrissey. Keeps it low. No, slips off the hurl. Greasy ball up and high over the bar. But what a ball in from Reedy to substitute. Substitution for clear. Mark Rogers is the man to make way, and on instead is Shane Meehan. That's the change for clear. Both managements emptying the benches now as we approach the last six minutes of this monster championship classic. Ball won by Tony Kelly. Kelly sends that one in, but into the night sky. It's gone to the right hand side and wide. Just clear second wide of the second half. They're ninth in all. Puck out. Won by Barry Nash already, away to our right-hand side. Nash sends a long ball up the field. Nobody at home from a Limerick point of view, though. And Clare have possession of it through Adam Hogan. Hogan pops the ball now towards John Conlon, under pressure from Carl O'Neill. Ah, Conlon has done exceptionally well. Oh, and then, just as I said, he's given it to David Reedy. Reedy foul, was he? Referee says no. Graham Mulcahy hooped as he tried to walk it inside. It might work out. Tom Morrissey is all alone on this near side. The ball won't get to him. Clear have it, but Aaron Galan was being fouled, says the referee. It's going to be a free, free for a hold of the hand on Aaron Galan. And that's probably, it. I think there was a yellow card flashed as well for Conor Cleary. It was probably a very good free to concede because Seamus Flanagan, out of picture, was calling for it, but the referee had given a yellow card for that. It was, and Galan played soccer all winter. He went to give the little flick at the outside of the boot, but he ended up being fouled. But clearly, he's, they've had a great battle all day long, and listen, it's better to concede a point, I suppose, than a goal. Aaron Galan with this free, dead straight in front of the post, 21 out from goal has sent it between the uprights. We're level. Last year in the group stages, it finished Limerick 121, Clare 24 points. It finished level in the Munster final. Limerick won it after extra time. What odds to draw tonight. Incredible stuff. As Aber Quilligan's puck out. 
sent down this near side. Barry Nash, is there a winner in either of these two teams? Nash comes away with it on the defence of 65, finds the support from Graham Mulcahy, wrestled out of it. Tony Kelly is there to pick up possession for Clare. Beautiful ball across the centre, picked up by David Fitzgerald. Two for him tonight, now towards Shane O'Donnell. One for him, back towards Fitzgerald. Onto the edge of the semicircle. This is going to be a massive score. Shot brilliantly saved by Nicky Quaid yet again. And Kyle Hayes goes for it. Maybe Clare should have taken the point. Shane O'Donnell has it now. O'Donnell lays it down that far side, gets it himself again. Onto the 21. Shane O'Donnell. He does put Clare into the lead. His second point of the night. Clear by one, 121 to 120, three minutes left. Oh, Donald, he's getting better as the game is going on. But what a save from Nicky Quaid. Back out to O'Donnell, never gives up. Real bright low team and over the bar. Talk out is already... Talk out has already gone down that far side. Clear win possession of it. Play this one down that far side of the field. Picked up there by... Barry Nash off towards Tom Morrissey. Morrissey striking it in, but it's right and wide. 13th wide. They're looking for Hawkeye. 13th wide. There's, there's no Hawkeye here today. Here's an opportunity for Clare as they play this one. Yeah, this one is sent in to the left hand, to the right hand side, I should say, and wide. Another wide. 10th wide for Clare as the puck out is already sent again down that far side of the field. Clare winning possession of it though, and Dermot Ryan. Long ball played forward, won by Shane Meehan out in front of his man. Meehan turns, he strikes this one, sends this one in, but it goes to the right-hand side and wide. Another wide, that's an 11th wide for Clare. 11 wides for Clare, 13 wides for Limerick, and on the scoreboard, it's Clare 121. Limerick 120, puck out, sent down this near side. Graham Mulcahy tries to win it. Well, the hurling seemed to be pulled out of him there. The referee says no. Ball played near side of the field now. It's in possession with Aidan McCarthy. He's brilliantly blocked down, but it worked out for Tony Kelly. Here comes Tony Kelly onto the 21. Still going, Tony Kelly strikes it in. Our Clare on the verge of a famous win at the Gaelic Grounds. Tony Kelly with his fourth of the night and they lead by two with 90 seconds left. Incredible, incredible stuff. Colum Lines, meanwhile, is coming back down the field to have a chat with a couple of players. There is a yellow card for a clear man inside there. It's all happening, Tommy Walsh, in the, in the last 90-odd seconds. John Collin picks up a yellow card. Yeah, and who's going to rule out this Limerick team? They have composure. One or two wise there lately, but... Puck out, sent down this near side of the field. Brilliant take by Dermot Ryan on that far side. Lays it up as far as John Conlon. Conlon launching this ball forward. Brilliantly won. No, it's not over there initially. Will it be won at the second attempt? Tight towards that sideline. It is Shane Meehan. Meehan up against Mike Casey. Meehan striking this one in, but it goes to the left-hand side and wide. That is the 12th wide of the game. Tommy Walsh type for man of the match. Yeah, the man of the match has been great performances all over the field. Conor Cleary for Clare, John Conlon, um, David Fitzgerald, but Tony Kelly, but who I'm going for is on the Clare team is John Conlon. So John Conlon is our central man of the match in a classic championship game. Conlon has had a super performance. Changes been made, as you can see as well. Conor Deal has gone off. The man to replace him is Conor Boylan, trying to win the ball beneath us. That's picked up by Carl Malone, launching this ball long down the field. Barry Nash can't get to it, Tony Kelly, he's no hurley, lays it up as far as Aaron Shanahan. Shanahan going forward, strikes it in and sends it over the crossbar. It is a massive lead now for Clare. Three points, three additional minutes to be added on. Brilliant take from Tony Kelly, found Aaron Shanahan, and he has put Clare three to the good. Game back on already. Limerick chasing this one. They won't give up just quite yet. David Reedy right in the halfway line, sending this one in, but it has gone to the left-hand side and wide. Wide number 14 for Limerick. Yeah, when you hit the high, you know, 13, 14, 15, when you hit them high teens in the wide stakes, you're in trouble. We've seen it last week, 12 versus 15. Today, Limerick have the larger amount of whites. 
for Limerick that have had great performances too. I just the game got ahead of me. Will O'Donnell has been brilliant. Tom Morrissey has been outstanding. But Tony Kelly, what about him for the last 10 minutes? He really stepped up. Aver Quill against Pockow. Clare leading by three points at the Gaelic rounds. What a take from Shanahar. What a score. What a score from Aaron Shanahar. Plucked it out of the sky. Look what it means to those Clare supporters. What a skill from Shanahar. Turn and strike and a four point lead for Clare. Mike Casey, well back in his own half back line, launching this one forward. Seamus Flanagan. Graham Mulcahy is there as well. It's Flanagan that has a shot from Flanagan. Oh, it's a goal. Limerick haven't given up just quite yet. Seamus Flanagan with the second goal of the night. And we're back to a one-point game. Ah, oh, they never give up this Limerick team. Flanagan, he's looking for the ball all day long. Has never uh, shirked the shot. Here it is. Flanagan. Probably could have saved it. Aver Quilligan, no doubt, will be disappointed, but Shamie Flanagan has gotten his second goal, and all of a sudden there's only one between them in the Gaelic rounds. What a night, what a game, regardless of the winner, if there's to be one. What a game we've witnessed. Tony Kelly shouldered out over this near sideline, and it's going to be a line ball for Limerick. We've got 45 seconds left. Oh, what a game. So, out of camera, all the space is down the Limerick forward line now there's no spare men back there so if a ball goes over all them defenders it's a 50 51 into galan and flanagan here comes the line ball for barry nash possession now vital clear by one 124 that's a total of 27 220 for limerick is 26 tony kelly has it all he could do was put it out over this near sideline and let oh. the ball go dead and limerick will have another opportunity 10 seconds of stoppage time left Incredible, incredible. Brian Lohan can hardly look. Here comes the line ball from Barry Nash. Clear making a substitution. Paul Flanagan is coming on. That's going to run the top clock down. Adam Hogan is the man to make way. Paul Flanagan comes on to replace him. Here's Barry Nash with the line ball. It's come up this near side. Who's going to win it? Seamus Flanagan. It rolls behind him. Clare have the numbers back there. It's Ryan Taylor comes away with it. The pass has been won. The foul has been committed. And Ryan Taylor believes that is job done from a Clare perspective. He does an important one. We're gone over the three minutes now. But how important the flick was David McInerney's as that ball was going down the line. Look at the passion and the... Look at what it means. Limerick were 6-1 to one on to win here tonight. I don't think they've ever beaten Limerick in Championship in the Gaelic grounds, Liam. Clare, it will be a famous night for Clare, but Brian Lohan, I'm sure, will say there is nothing won yet. It is a famous night for Clare. They have come to the TUS Gaelic grounds knowing they have to win. Limerick's long run, undefeated in the Munster Championship, is brought to an end by a Clare side who came with passion and no shortage of skill. And they thoroughly deserve their win. What a game and what a win for Clare, Tommy Walsh. Yes, and Limerick's 17 match unbeaten run in Championship Hurling has gone out the window here now, but they'll refocus, they'll recharge the batteries. What a famous night for Clare. And I was looking at their team coming into it, Liam. They have a serious, serious forward line. When you have good forwards like Clare, you always have a chance. And they got their blows here today, a bit unlucky for certain goals. They stay coming back and back and they thoroughly deserve their win. Well, Limerick have scored two goals and 20 points tonight. It hasn't been enough. 124 for Clare gives them the one-point victory. And look at what it means to these Clare supporters and the Clare players. There you see Cahill Malone absolutely delighted. Look at Brian Lohan. What a night for him. Well, Clare were coming here. They try to keep the supporters off the field. Now the pitch invasion is uh, starting. Brian Lohan gets the applause and gets the shake hands. What a night. It has finished here at the Gaelic Grounds. Clare with a one-point win on a full-time scoreline. Limerick 220, Clare 124. Let's go down to the sideline. John Conlon is our man of the match, and he's down there with Clow. John, congratulations. Central man of the match. You're here with the Central as well. John, what is it about Clare and Limerick and the battles out there? It's like any club derby or 
local derby now. I only live out the road. I'm closer to the Gaelic grounds than I am to, to Inna. So it's just that rivalry. Um, look, we, we grow up, we go to college. There's work between each other. You know, we're, we're always in Limerick or in, or in Clare. So look, it's just a fantastic uh, game. You know, it was a, another one of those humdingers compared to last year. And um, look, we're just delighted to get out on the right side. And this, this still, still got a goal near the end to put, put the sweat on us. How satisfying is it after last week's performance, coming in off the back of a loss, and you as a, as a back unit, how satisfying is it that you got that performance this evening? Yeah, look, we went back to train on Tuesday night, and um, we were you know, really upset that it was a game we thought we got away from ourselves. You know, any team you give three goals to, like we did, you know, they're not, you're not giving them some head start in inter-county, and if that happened at junior B level or underage, you'd be fair tick about the three goals that we gave away. And to go away at five, we were really tick as a, a defensive unit. We didn't do that um, last year. and. Uh, Look, it was the first day out, it was a bit blew off the cobwebs and look, we got the points on the board, we're delighted tonight. You got the good start, obviously, at the top, you know, with the goal chances and whatnot. What was said to you at halftime? Just keep doing what you were doing? Just keep doing what we were doing. We knew when, when we met last night um, for a meeting and uh, we just laid it out. We know that we're as good as them. We know that we can give it to them. Um, they're a super team and a super outfit. Um, but look, you can take a right off the ball against them. We're just delighted to get the win and uh, Brian... That's what Brian does, in fairness to me, he gives it everything to, to succeed. And um, you know, um, super management, super bunch of players, and we're just delighted. And uh, one, once since we finish, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone um, at my brother's wedding. I had to skip on there at about four o'clock from uh, all the, the duties of best man, but uh, I'm sure they're roaring at the moment, so we'll have some part tonight. Enjoy the celebrations. Congratulations. Oh, where else would you get it? Uh, John Connell left his brother's wedding to come here and picks up a piece of crystal to take back to the wedding. I'm sure they'll have some night there, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> the Jays Country Kayleigh Van will be in full flow <laughs> later on. But what, what a game, though. What an absolute cracking game. But this, I won't say it's blown the Munster Championship wide open because it's only round two, but really a cracking game and Clare right back in it now. Yeah, and it just gives everyone belief in the country that suddenly maybe it's not just a, a one-team All-Ireland this year. It's not just going to be Limerick steamrolling to a four. Yes, they may do so, but they'll be made to work for it. Davy Fitz's charges in Watford, they made them work for it last week, only for how important now was that Kyle Hayes chase back on Austin Gleeson? That would have been two losses if Austin Gleeson had to got that goal. But they're still in it, but a famous night here for Clare. Last year, three draws. Tonight, they put in the work and won. That's the key. And look what it means to the Clare supporters down here. Shane O'Donnell swamped in the middle of them. Hero, of course, of their All-Ireland win back in the day. And, uh, well, they, they might as well enjoy it. Full-back Conor Cleary in there too. The Clare supporters, they've, they've lived in the shadow of Limerick, I suppose, over the last couple of years. It probably hasn't been easy for them, but they've gotten the super win tonight. But Limerick won't go anywhere either. John no. Kiley won't panic just quite yet. No, and ten years ago, Clare beat Limerick in All-Ireland semi-final, went on and won the All-Ireland final. Ten years later, Limerick are after winning four All-Ireland si since. Who foresaw that? Probably nobody. And um, they've had to wait in the sidelines. They've trained hard since Lone came in. This is his fourth year in charge. But there's no substitute. Look out there. If you're a coach, a manager all around the country, there's no substitute for toughness. There's no sub substitute for skill, hard work, but winning your own ball. Yes, you need the movement. Yes, you need the silk and buys inside. You need the whole package. And no one just goes to show. If you have a tough team, a team that can win their own ball, that will train hard, will go to the well time and time again, you'll always have a chance. Well... Hope wherever you watched it, you enjoyed it as much as myself and Tommy did bringing it to you. There is still plenty more analysis to come, and what a game to analyse. The lads will do that with Gronia in just a couple of moments, but it is finished here. A famous night for Clare. Clare, one goal and 24 points. Limerick, 220. Lots more analysis to come in just a moment.